Boy, did I nail the timing on that, huh? They're all going off at the same time. Now that all the noise is done. Yeah, we're maybe going to get some rain tonight. I don't know. We'll see. I hope so. <clears throat> no sleet or snow, though. It's just going to be rain. Let's see if anything's actually coming in here. It's supposed to come in tonight, so I don't necessarily expect to see anything now. There's nothing going on right now. But I can see what could turn into something, so we'll see. Morning, Roberta. Morning, lovely cat. How are we doing today? Yeah, good thing you got another to go here. You can spend the whole time with us, right, Bite? You glad that Janine's here for the count? Yeah. <coughs> yeah that's right. You tip the camera down so they can see your face. And what do you do? You show your butt. You're just not much of an entertainer, are you? Morning, Suzanne. Oh, it's okay. I knew what you meant. Even you knew what she meant, right? Yeah. Oh, just been kind of doing my thing. Trying to become marginally competent at work. A lot of work ahead of me. But I'm getting there. We're making progress. <clears throat> Good morning, Susan. Y'all might need to pick up some of the slack today. I don't know if uh, if Rhonda's going to be here, so. Got to keep it going here. <clears throat>
Yeah, sad to hear about uh, the princess and her cancer diagnosis. You were on the Mark Levin show, you mentioned me. That's awesome. I listened to the Mark Levin show on the podcast, so that would be cool to hear that. That's funny. Wow, a little free promotion here. Let's see if let's see if my subscriber rate jumps. That's actually funny. If I hear it, I'll have to make a recording of it and put it on the Facebook page or something. <laughs> what day were you on? I haven't really followed it that much either. I've been, uh, I just saw, kind of saw the headlines that she's been diagnosed with cancer. They're treating her, so who knows? I guess we'll find out now if there really is a cure for cancer and doctors are just holding it back because I would bet you that if there is, she'd be somebody who could access it. Her cancer will just mysteriously go away. But I don't know, we'll see. That is a shame, she's so young. I mean, I guess it, it doesn't it doesn't become good news if it's an old person, but yeah, I guess it just seems like more of a strategy, uh, more of a tragedy when it is a young person. Oh, Fergie too? I guess I didn't hear that one. <clears throat> I don't really follow the royal news too much. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it doesn't really hold that much uh, interest for me. But that is sort of big news. No, it, it never is. You're right. Never short of news. Always something going on there. <clears throat> it's funny. I was kind of looking at the uh, at the uh, video monitor in the background. It looks like it's flickering uh, when I look at it on the monitor in front of me, but it looks normal in the back. So I guess we're okay. <clears throat> Thank you for covering that, Susan. Yeah, that's, you know, you, you'll you just be our news correspondent here. And now to Dr. Susan with the uh, Royal Update. <laughs> Is that what you want to call it, BBC and me? And now Dr. Susan Flanagan, I can't even talk. And now Dr. Susan Flanagan with the BBC and me. Take it away, Susan.
Oh, I, I don't doubt that there are just shows dedicated to, to just them. There's so many people in the world who are obsessed with the, the royalty. Good morning, Breck. How are you? Yeah, I bet they are. You know, that's that's un, that's unfortunate that you know people would try and snoop into stuff like that, but unfortunately, that's the world we live in today. I don't work till midnight. I'm off uh, usually. Well, the shift changes at seven thirty. I'm I'm done with work when I'm done with work. So actually, on Wednesday night, I was there till ten thirty. But <clears throat> you know, last night I walked out probably about eight o'clock. Hey, bear with me. I got like cat hair bugging me here. <laughs> But in terms of your question, I do eat, I don't eat, I don't eat dinner to begin with, but I have lunch. Uh, they have a cafeteria on the property managed by a local restaurant. You, you, did you enjoy Meow Wolf? I guess that was the second one I've been to. So I kind of knew what I was getting into. <laughs> In fact, when I was going in, um, uh, the the uh, tour guide, for lack of a better tar uh, term, um, told you know uh, asked me if I'd ever been here, been to a meow wolf before, and I told her, yeah, I've been to the one in Santa Fe Springs or Santa Fe in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. <coughs> I haven't made ice cream because I kind of like to use fresh ingredients and the fresh ingredients aren't always uh, as available uh, in the winter, but we probably will get going again, um, you know, when we start getting closer to the summer, when there starts being something good to work with. Yeah, that's about what it took me to get through it. You, Cause you want to spend time because, um, you know, you want you want to work, uh, spend time there so you can really, you know, explore all of it because, you know, there's places, you know, you got to really interact with things. You know, you walk into the room with all the refrigerators, you got to open up the refrigerators because some of them are passageways into other rooms. So you got to look everywhere. Anything looks like a door. You walk. You got to walk into the fireplace, see what's going on. You know, because that, that takes you to a whole other world. You know, there's just. You know, there's a storage shed outside. You got to go into the storage shed. You know, you get in it, and that just takes time to work your way through all of it. You know, I mean, there were points I was thinking, okay, how do I get out of here? And, you know, I just kept kind of wandering around until I found someplace I recognized. And, but yeah, you got to spend a, spend at least an hour and a half there. No, I don't, I don't work at night. I work, day, I still work days, but uh, now that I become a lead over there, my work doesn't end when the shift is over. My work ends when the work is over. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing Minnesota has been getting some snow lately. Uh, we may get some rain tonight. I don't see any on the radar right now, but it's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow morning. So that's cool. The garden is going to like it. Never tried banana ice cream, no. I'm not a huge banana fan though, so that's sort of an issue. I have to, it has to be something I'm into. And, uh, you know, the, the, be the best ice cream I made out of that is peach ice cream. That was, that was amazingly good. And I will definitely make that one again. Oh, let's see what Minnesota is sending to Michigan here. I can look at that. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, the whole area is just kind of blanketed with snow here. Let's zoom out here so we can maybe see the. Wow. 
Yeah. So I don't know how well you can see that, but that's that's all kind of Minnesota there centered. All that pink is snow. All the white is uh, high altitude clouds and stuff like that. And as it goes north, um, you know, it's getting colder and colder. So yeah, there's a lot of snow going on there. Now it depends on which which half of Michigan you're in. It looks like uh, the bottom half there isn't going to get a uh, get a whole lot. But if you're in that little bit up here, let me see, get my. If you're like up here, uh, you're going to get it. So. <coughs> Yeah, they sell peach trees. In fact, uh, one of the things I'm thinking if I replace the pool is that I'm going to put peaches in. Now it's going to depend on what the, uh, you know, it's going to depend on, you know, how they deal with the cold. Uh, I know they'll deal fine with the heat, but it can get cold here too. Northern Michigan, okay. Uh, the, it seems the more north you get, uh, then uh, the more chance there is. But except for Hawaii, Michigan's kind of weird because it's in two parts. And so whether you're in the top part or the bottom part, Or are they in the 50th anniversary of Little House in the Prairie? Are they having a festival for that? They're opening a Meow Wolf in Houston. That's that's a trip. Well, I, I think trees kind of have to be in the ground to really do well. They, they don't get big. You know, I want a, I want a big tree. Yeah, I never really thought about uh, what, uh, what, what those in Michigan call the top half and the bottom half. I always thought about the bottom half as like uh, Gene said, the mitten. Well, the two I've been, you know, the, you know, it's it's different people that do them. So usually, what they do is uh, is they'll hire a bunch of local artists to come in and decorate them. And uh, so each one of them is unique. They're all going to have, uh, you know, different things to look at. So it is worth going to look at all of them because the one in New Mexico was different from the one I went to in Texas, and I'm sure they're all different. There's supposedly one in Vegas, and I don't know at least one more. I don't remember where exactly it is. Upper and lower peninsula. Okay. I knew somebody would have to know. It was just one of those things that it's never really come up before. So I never really thought about it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there's probably all sorts of uh, kind of local nicknames too. That doesn't surprise me. Ah, oh, fudge, huh? Hey, Darth, how you doing, buddy?
Good to see your name. Yeah, that's right. I can't really see you. I got to put up with something worse. I got to look at this. I've heard they're proposing it. Uh, I've heard actually uh, as many as like four states. Work is good, work is good. I'm uh, getting good hours, learning some good stuff and uh, making good progress. Hard work, but it's worth it when I see that paycheck. It definitely makes it worthwhile. I mean, it's really, really hard work. I come home after a 12 hour, 14 hour, 15 hour day, and I'm exhausted. But I guess, and, and I, I even said this to my boss, it's hard work, it's, it's exhausting work, it's challenging work, but it's all worthwhile when I, uh, when I see that paycheck. I do have some new rocks. I was hoping somebody would ask that. This is the uh, one of my newest uh, pieces of uh, of uh, specimen here. This is just this is just a common piece of pyrite, uh, which is kind of cool. But what I really like about it is you get close to it. And I don't know if you can even see it here, but these there's these tiny little quartz crystals in here. I've never seen that in pyrite before, and so I thought that was really cool. You know, I have a I have a larger piece of pyrite in my collection already, but what I really like is the big giant crystals that this one has. The one I have, the crystals are maybe like a millimeter or so. But, you know, some of these are are like, you know, four, four or five millimeters and, you know, across. So that's very, very cool. I like that one a lot. This is sometimes called fool's gold, if you ever wondered. And then there's the new, uh, uh, monster of my collection here. Uh, this is a, now the largest thing I own. It weighs 20 pounds. And that is an impressive piece of, uh, of uh, crystal, isn't it? It's just a, it's a common quartz crystal, um, but yeah, <laughs> like I said, it's heavy. I can't even hold it. It weighs about 20 pounds. And uh, even, come, even came with this little uh, display rack thing. And I've been looking at this for a few weeks. In fact, I showed it on, I showed you a photo of it last week on the uh, live stream and I went and picked it up uh, and they gave me a really good price on it too. But it's still the most expensive thing I've ever bought uh, in terms of rocks. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not wasting the money. Uh, you know, I'm. I am uh, trying to save some of it. I. I got my bonus uh, about two weeks ago, and right now that's kind of just been put into my high interest savings account. That may end up being used if we repair the pool or something. That's sort of what that was in. In, uh, but I had kind of had in mind for that. But I have a good good 401k and and stuff like that. And, I got a little bit of money from my mom, so that's being put away. So that's a good thing too. <coughs> you have a hunk of pyrite with, a, with with garnets growing out of it. That's cool. That is really neat. Because I got a couple pieces of pyrite and I do have a garnet, but not in one specimen. It isn't really that much in front more impressive under sunlight and it's overcast out today. So there's no real sunlight anyway. You know, some of the things I have absolutely pop when you bring them outside that piece of uh, 
malachite that I have um, is amazing looking under the sun. In fact, that was that was sort of what bought, uh, sold me on it because I've seen it in the store um, a bunch of times and just kind of walked past it. It was like, oh yeah, it's a green rock. Uh, but at one point, uh, they uh, pulled out pulled out a white light and showed it to me, and it just it was gorgeous. And I was, and I said, whoa, I've walked past that you know half a dozen times and uh, never been really impressed with it. But that is amazing, and I ended up buying it on the spot. It's mostly managing other people and doing paperwork. The kind of the big uh, thing that I kind of have to manage is when we stop manufacturing one batch of a product and start on to the next one, because then you get to reconfigure the line and uh, I end up managing those, what we call line turns. And uh, that's a big part of it, but keeping up with the paperwork and all that other stuff, you know, that's, that's all part of it. I was talking to my brother-in-law about what, what I should be doing. And he's, he's recommending a, uh, a uh, fund that I should uh, put some money in. Uh, he says it's doing really well, and so I'll probably do do that. You know, he he's done very well. He's managed my finances uh, for I don't know twenty five years, I guess, ever since he married my sister. And uh, he's done very well by me. Yeah, I, I am running out of space uh, for for the rocks. And what I've been doing is just been packing them in tighter and tighter and tighter. In fact, you can kind of see it all, all of them right there. That's where, where I have them right now. But yeah, I do want, want to build that, that case and that will probably happen at some point. Well, no, it will definitely happen at some point, but hopefully it'll happen some point soon. because I do need to get them off the table. And they are getting to be too many of them now. And of course, there's a rock and mineral show coming up in, in a little over a month that I'll be going to, and you know I'll, I'll spend way too much money there. The nice thing is the collection is, is, you know, it's an investment. You know, this stuff isn't going to lose value. <laughs> In fact, um, I was looking for a while trying to find a light panel that would uh, go really deep into the ultraviolet so I could use that to light up uh, some of my specimens. And I found this little LED panel that it just plugs into a USB port. So here, I'll plug it in and I'll show you. And then it just turns into an ultraviolet light. And so I'm thinking I'll probably end up putting that, uh, you know, under the, uh, on the, on, on the underside of the case on one of them so I can turn them, turn it on from time to time. You know, if I want to see the, the uranium glass, or if I want to see the um, the UV reactive rocks. Now, I'm a little disappointed. This doesn't go as much into the UV as I was hoping it would. And so uh, it makes the uranium glass look really good. In fact, uh, you may have noticed that the uranium glass is glowing over there in the background because I have one of those sitting on the table next to it, lighting it up. So it works really good, but it isn't really as impressive with the, uh, um uh with the with the minerals that uh, light up not as much as the flashlight so i don't know if the flashlight is more powerful or it's just a different wavelength i could conceivably do that susan too you know build a 
build a rock display case in that room. You know, the cats would be very upset because they'd have to give up their room, but no, it's not going to have glass shelves. It'll have wooden shelves. The, I, I'd be concerned about having glass shelves because, like I said, this specimen here of the uh, of the quartz I showed you, I mean, it weighs 20 pounds. You know, that'll break the glass. And I have several pieces that are pretty large. Yeah, we were talking about Princess Kate a little while ago. <sighs> well, and it might end up turning into something, uh, you know, after the cats are gone, because I mean, you know, the, the cats aren't our children anymore. In fact, they're probably about 17 now. This is about the time of year they were born. Because I found them in the end, I got them at the end of April, and they were about five weeks old. Well, five weeks uh, from the end of April is about now. So it's probably just about Bite Newell's uh, birthday. Yeah, see, that would, that would be part of the problem too, Darth. Uh, the cats would kind of get cat fur and cat dander all over it. And, you know, I'd want, it would probably have to be either or, it'd be the rocks or the cats. But you're right, I could, that, that isn't a bad idea. I could actually see that uh, happening. Yeah, some some of them might be uh, might, might be interesting to spread them around in the yard, <clears throat> but it would have to be something big that I could go find, and also something that isn't going to get damaged being exposed to the elements. Well, yeah, or stolen, you're right. But if I were gonna put them in the yard, they'd be in the backyard. Yeah, you're right, they are created from the elements, but they also tend to get broken down by the elements. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't want, you know, the part, part of this is, uh, you know, keeping them, keeping them looking nice. an altar of rocks <laughs> or like that ammonite wall I visited a few weeks ago. <clears throat> there isn't really an Ikea around, <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Need a cough button like they have on radio. There isn't really an Ikea here, but even there I'd be concerned because 
Um, Ikea isn't necessarily known for high quality stuff. And when you're dealing with a 20 pound specimen like this, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to want to risk this thing falling and breaking uh, because a cheap piece of Ikea particle board furniture couldn't hold up to the weight. <laughs> I've never had any problems stealing with people stealing things in my backyard. I've never had any problems with people stealing things in the front yard. So, you know, I, I think people around here in Texas sort of uh, respect each other's uh, property a little bit better than maybe California. I wouldn't put, put stuff in the front yard in California and walk away. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I want something as fancy as it, like a curio cabinet. I would be building shelves or a display case or something like that. <sighs> don't really have any, any news yet of the pool. I'm kind of going to maybe go for a little while and let's see whether I miss it or not. I may I may punt on this one until next summer or next winter. That's one of the options. The other one is remove it and put some fruit trees in that spot. That'd be a perfect place for fruit trees. Good sun during the during the growing season. There's a lot of people say I should be tested, but not for allergies. <clears throat> now, actually, I, I was sick a little bit last week. It was just a real, real simple, you know, what, what often happens is I lose my voice. That's, that seems to be how I get sick these days. And so when I went to work on, uh, on uh, Wednesday, you know, I had no voice at all and it's, it's back pretty much, but it's still kind of breaking up a little bit. Never been to the, to the Nebraska furniture store. Can I assume it's in Nebraska? Did you get a sprinkler? I do have a sprinkler system actually. <coughs> Yeah, I know. I remember running in the sprinklers when I was a kid, too. All sorts of fun. Meow. Come on up. <laughs> Yeah, Dallas is a long way to go for a, for a furniture store. I don't know. It'd be interesting.
There you go. There's there's the word from the man himself. I always do manage to do, to find something to vlog in Dallas, so that is true. But one of the reasons I, I was so happy to get out of uh, uh, L.A. was to avoid the traffic. And so I, try, I like to try and avoid uh, going into the big cities as much as possible because it's the same thing. You know, I went to Dallas, went through Dallas when I went and did that Ammonite wall a couple of weeks ago. And the traffic was a nightmare going through that. When I came home from uh, Johnson Space Center, I had to drive through Houston. And um, <clears throat> that was... Uh, a lot of traffic. Austin wasn't so bad. Uh, I think it was probably because I was there on a Saturday and it was kind of the middle of the day, but I have been leading my 30 mile circle a little bit more recently. Austin was definitely that. Johnson Space Center was that. Ammonite Wall was definitely that. I, th I think I kind of, you know, I think I've mentioned this before that that uh, one of the things that kind of got me more open to like driving a little bit was when I went to California a couple of years ago to visit my mom for her birthday. And uh, it really, you know, really got me thinking about, you know, how how far I can make it in one day and like maybe on a long, on one of my long weekends that, you know, I could spend one day driving somewhere, a couple of days checking out the place and then a day driving back. Yeah, uh, JFK videos are definitely uh, uh, two, you know, two of the top videos. <clears throat> the one at the, uh, at the Texas Book Depository where I couldn't shoot video, that was the least of the, of the three, and he, even it does well. And, uh, my Logan's Run video, my RoboCop videos are both doing well. Uh, well. And uh, the Dazed and Confused videos, uh, that's well on its way. That's going to take a little while to get, get a little traction, but I expect that'll be another good one too. I, I do want to go visit the uh, the Alamo definitely. <clears throat> no, I, I'm not, I haven't been to Medford. Is that in Texas? Yeah, I, when I went to uh, Meow Wolf, I, I drove right by the president of uh, J uh, George W. Bush Library and halfway thought about uh, stopping there, but I was tired and uh, uh, basically was ready to go home. So we'll, we'll do that at some point. That's close enough that that will be worth the trip because, yeah, I want to see that one, too. And Bluebell Ice Cream, if I could get it, if there's a... Uh, uh, a factory tour. Um, I would definitely go that go see that because I've become a I've become a huge Bluebell ice cream fan. Yeah, I went to the LBJ Library with Jordan a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, Reagan was great. Have not been to the Lincoln Library. The only ones I've been to are Reagan, Nixon, H. Uh, w. Bush, and LBJ. The college town, huh? Okay. Lincoln Library would be fascinating, though. But yeah, in terms of my favorite, I think Reagan was definitely the one.
yeah, 11 hours uh, on the road uh, would basically get me anywhere in Texas I wanted to go. And probably, I mean, I know when I came home from, uh, uh, you know, on the last day when I drove home a couple of months ago from California, I made it from Carlsbad, New Mexico home starting a little afternoon. And I made it home by like 8 or 8.30. So, yeah, I mean, I could get, I could get into any of the adjacent states. So that would get me, what, it would get me into Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, probably. <coughs> I got to be more open to that. That would be uh, definitely something to check out. And something Jim Varney uh, related would definitely be kind of fun. I have thought about getting a drone. Jordan was talking about a drone at one point too. I don't know if he, if he uh, kind of uh, got over that or what, but some of the stuff that, that he, uh, that Jordan, uh, does would be very cool with a drone. It would be very cool with some of my, if I do some national park videos too. But a lot of places you got to be careful. They uh, kind of frown on drones or even outright ban them. Yeah, but what Jordan's talking about is eleven hours like a normal person drives. This is Texas. I'm already driving like a Texan. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd be pretty good at uh, piloting a drone, and they're pretty easy now. They're they're pretty simple to fly now. I think they're they're pretty much uh, you know plug and play almost. Go up, go forward, go backwards, and it it does all the stabilizing itself. That's always been the hard thing, you know. Um, I actually have, if you look up there, you really probably can't see it very well, but I do have a couple of like model helicopters up there. But I've never flown that much primarily because they're all manual and they're really, really hard to fly. And uh, they're delicate and they don't do well outdoors and, and all that. Oh man, you're right, Jordan. You get some idiot uh, on in the, you get a two lane highway and you'll get some idiot in the fast lane where the speed limit's 75 miles an hour and doing 50. I know it's frustrating. You'd think that some place, you know, there'd be places that would know how to, you know, know that the fast lane is on the left. And if you're not in the fast lane, or if you're not going to go fast in the fast lane and cars are behind you and there's nothing in front of you, you'd pull over. <clears throat> but the truth is, I went through uh, Arizona and uh, New Mexico on the trip home and the drivers were consistent, especially the truck drivers. Nothing any of it freaks me out and makes me more frustrated than, oh, here got a truck in the slow lane that's going 55 miles an hour and the truck behind him wants to pass up and is gonna do it at 55 and a quarter miles. So it's gonna take five minutes for him to pass, you know? My UFO shirt, oh, that's just one I got at Roswell. That's my alien shirt. He's been here a bunch of times. He's been on the stream. <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to stick to the speed limits when I'm in, in town. So if it's, you know, 40 miles an hour, I stick with that. Uh, but I'll bend the, the limits a little bit when I'm outside of town by 10 or 15.
Yeah, I don't, I don't mind, uh, you know, spending time in the car because I'll put on Mark Levin and listen to him or something like that. And the time goes pretty fast. Yeah, I know. I have, I have the, and San Antonio wouldn't be that long of a drive. It'd probably be four or five hours. <clears throat> so yeah, there, there are, definitely things I'd like to go see and and the Alamo is definitely one got to check out the basement always wanted to see that But yeah, I am more open to to driving a little bit. <clears throat> that was sort of because I mean, you you think about it. The the one of the last few videos I did the uh, the Ammonite Wall that was a hundred miles north of here, uh, north a little north of uh, Dallas. The uh, the uh, Dazed and Confused videos that was about a hundred miles south of here in Austin, and. Uh, the uh, Johnson Space Center that was 100 miles south uh, southeast of uh, of Austin in Houston. So, it's an inside joke, Scott. I don't know. I, I guess I owe Jordan a visit. So one of these days I got to go, go check out his place, but he's visited me like three, three, four times now here in Texas and I haven't visited him once yet. So I don't know. I guess I, uh, I guess I, uh, I got to do that at some point. And, and when I do get to the point, you know, we'll, we'll work something out. No, I don't think I'm going to go do an RV thing. Not a chance. <laughs> I'll give you a, I'll give you a slight clue, Scott, go see the movie Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Well, we'll see. Good morning, Connie. Say hi to Connie, bye. Oh, Nibble's probably in her room. That's where she tends to, uh, to hang out.
Now I guess Rhonda's working today. But that's okay. You guys can keep up the keep up the pace, right? Keep it going. Yeah, I, I do want to do a little bit of that, Roberta. Oh, Roberta. <coughs> because I enjoy going out and seeing things. I had a I had a blast. I had a lot of so much fun doing the dazed and confused video. I had so much fun uh, you know going to Johnson Space Center. That was amazing. And the truth is, as I do more and more stuff in, uh, in kind of the area here, you know, you get to the point where I've kind of shown you everything. I mean, how many times is going to take you to the zoo? How many times is going to take you to the Mayborn Museum? How many times can we walk across uh, the bridge? You know, is, I, got, I got to kind of get outside my, uh, <clears throat> what Jordan calls the 20 mile, 30 mile circle around where I live. So that's the cuckoo clock. There's the grandfather clock. I got them all kind of happening at the same time now. <clears throat> Well, it's something you have to kind of get used to, too, Breck. Because, uh, I mean, you watch my first videos. I had serious deer in the headlights, um, you know, on, on that. But you get to the point where it just kind of comes in, you know, comes a little more naturally and you get a little bit more comfortable with it when you do it. I don't really have a problem being in front of the camera anymore. You get used to it. I like going out on the hikes too, but those seemed those seemed to me like I was kind of calling it in a little bit, you know, phoning it in, kind of a cock out, a cop, a cop out. Wow, that, that came out weird. That wasn't what I meant to say. Kind of a cop out. But I do like going and hiking. <laughs> I've thought about renting like an RV or something like that. I don't know if I'd want to own one. <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, you do it a bunch of times, you get you get comfortable with it. Yeah, I love the cuckoo clock too. Um, I thought it was working perfectly, but there are there is still a little bit of a bug. So at some point I am gonna take it over to the clock guy and see if he can figure out what's going on. Every once in a while, uh, it will cuckoo the wrong number of times. And sometimes it'll cuckoo so much, it, just, it won't stop cuckooing and it'll continue until the weight hits the ground. And I've heard it happen a couple times now in the past week where it didn't do the right number of times. One time it did like 20 or 25. And so there's something wrong mechanical in there.
Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people that just uh, enjoy that. <coughs> and, I, and I can see, you know, the hiking videos maybe being popular with, you know, people that love to be active and be out in nature and stuff like that, but maybe can't for health reasons anymore, you know, so... Yeah, exactly, Darth. Yeah, I, I make enough money that I have to document it on my taxes, but not enough that it's really that big of a deal. I don't know if I'll call it a cuckoo clank, but yeah, my cuckoo clock is definitely a little bit out of control. Maybe it's just being rebellious, who knows? I don't know what age clocks become rebellious. You know, human beings, it's, you know, about 14, 15, but Well, I wouldn't really need a huge RV if I was going to, you know, do something, you know, I'd probably just get something small. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be huge for me. Um, so you, if, even if I was going to buy something, you know, just, you just have to have a, maybe a bed in bathroom or something like that. Something small. That's going to keep the gas mileage better too. You know, you get those big giant Winnebago's. And you know, you're gonna get, you know, 40 miles to the gallon or 40 gallons to the mile, one of the two. I know because uh, right before he passed away, my grandfather, my mom's dad, bought an our uh, bought a motor a mobile home, uh, Winnebago. And for a couple of years, he actually left it at my parents' house, so we used it. And I saw the, the amount of gas that my dad put into that thing and uh, <clears throat> how, far, how often we had to refill. Those things are tanks. I got some friends at work. I don't, I don't really interact that much with people. I'm kind of an introvert. <clears throat> well, the grandfather clock did come from the same grandfather that that uh, had the Winnebago, <clears throat> and it was fun. I mean, we enjoyed uh, doing it. It had one of those little cabs above the driver's compartment, so my sister and I would be would be up there, and you know, we could do our thing up there, and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, gas prices are crazy in California. I know when I was there, I paid like five and a half dollars a gallon, I think, uh, when I filled up right before I left. But like I said, I wouldn't need something that big. Bed in the bathroom, maybe a kitchen, that's all I need. Those can be done pretty small. I am capable of living pretty modestly if I have to.
I do like camping too. And see, I could do that too. You know, I got most of the camping stuff. I've got a tent, I've got a stove, I've got, you know, all the, all the basic things that I would need. Headed out to a gem and mineral show. Very cool. There's one coming to Waco in, uh, in early May that I'm going to, I'm looking forward to that. <coughs> Apparently there is a Waco Mineralogical Society that is doing a rock mineral show at the Lee Lockwood Museum, I think like the second week of May. Yeah, that's it. We'll put an RV on my Amazon wish list. I'm sure somebody will snap that up for me. I don't know, I'll probably get that bought by the end of the end of the live stream, right? Hey Elvis. How are you doing, Alice? Having a good week or weekend or whatever? I don't know. It's weekend for me, but it's just the start of the weekend. I know for most of the world, you know, the weekend's almost over. And see, that would probably be perfect for me, Gene. You know, just rent one. Find somebody that will rent me an RV for a week or two. Yeah, see, that would be a little too small. I, I don't mind a small RV, but HO scale, yeah, that's that's not gonna that's not gonna be big enough for me. <clears throat> Memphis is a place I'd love to visit. Probably not least, but I could definitely see myself renting one. I bet you I could rent one for you know a week or or something like that, and then. <clears throat> Well, because we need 24 hour coverage at work and um, it, it, with, with 12 hour days, you can get everybody 40 hour weeks, you know, averaging at least, you know, in my case, I average about 42 hours a week. It's 36 hours one week, 48 the next week. And then they can get 24 hour a day, seven day a week coverage. If you do eight hour days, even with three shifts, you're only getting Monday through through Friday coverage. And then you got to figure out what you're going to do on Saturdays and Sundays. But what my shift is, it's three 12 hour shifts one week, four 12 hour shifts the next week. And then it staggers back and forth and there's four shifts. And so they get 24 hour coverage. It makes sense. And I, I like the 12 hour days, you know, it's exhausting, but I like them also because then I get a minimum of three day weekend every week and every other week I get four day weekends. So like today, um, you know, it's the start of my four day weekend. <clears throat> yeah, see, and that's what I'd go look for Gene is someplace that would rent them out. And there's a whole bunch of like RV sales places. I bet you somebody's gonna have a rental place. I've fished a few times. I haven't fished in a long time. Yeah, I bet you there's all sorts of fun things we could find in Memphis. Yeah, that's why I was wondering that too, Gene, if there were places that sell and rent, that might be a possibility too. <clears throat> I 
No, I probably would. I mean, the only time I would rent it from somebody I knew, you know, as if it was somebody I knew. Oh, uh, Jordan's more the Elvis person, so. Well, the closest I, uh, you know, have the connection to Elvis is uh, that I once uh, ate lunch at the at one of the restaurants that he used to come to in Waco when he was serving at Fort Hood. Yeah, I'm sure there's somebody who'd rent them. That's a really good point uh, about parking them, because you're right. Uh, anything that's cool to vlog, you're going to have to park at. Now, a lot of times, you know, you know, big attractions and that kind of thing may have, uh, you know, parking places available for, you know, recreational vehicles and stuff like that. But maybe if it isn't like an official thing, you know, that can be that can definitely make things more complicated. That is a good point. Hey, Rhonda, welcome to the party. <laughs> All right. Conversation is going to pick up now. Rhonda can carry the most of this. The problem is that was uh, the Beach Boys that sang that, not Elvis. Or are you just doing a cover? Yeah, you're you're right. That's uh, you know it, it. If I were, yeah, you're right. It'd be something like maybe going going somewhere in the middle of nowhere or something where I could just pull over and uh, and do that kind of thing. But yeah, because Adam had an RV for a while, and I I guess he got rid of it. Didn't like it after a while, wasn't that right? <clears throat> Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, so he hated it in two weeks. Okay, yeah, that 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 doesn't surprise me. I, I definitely wouldn't buy one. But you're right. I, you know, I get much better gas mileage in the car. You know, when I'm out on the road, um, <clears throat> you know, the car has an economy mode that I can pop it into that. Uh, you know, makes it, uh, you know, consume less gas. And when I'm out on the road, you know, I can get 40 miles to the gallon of my car. And that makes sense. <clears throat> I've got a 12 and a half gallon tank and, and I can make, you know, 450 miles on a tank full. That definitely makes sense. Wow. Yeah, that, that's another problem with them too. They depreciate really fast. It doesn't surprise me that he could only get half of what he paid for it.
Yeah, I'm not really into dealing with diesel though. Diesel costs more. Sounds like Jordan's brought up a lot of points against uh, getting an RV. Yeah, but that's okay. We like jokes and, and it did get an interesting discussion going because I, I have honestly thought about it. But you know, sometimes you don't consider the, uh, the downside, you only consider the upsides and you know, hearing people that hearing from people that have done it and not been into it as much, or, or can point out what the bad, bad sides are, you know. Yeah, well, and I don't know, Adam's, I don't know where Adam lives exactly, uh, or lived exactly at the time, but um, I could probably store it on my front driveway, because I have a big long driveway, and like a little pull out section going into the backyard. So I, that wouldn't probably not be a problem. But you're right, a couple hundred bucks to fill up, and then, then you only get, you know, you know, 400 miles, and then you're filling up again, that I, I could understand that being an issue. I don't think there's any local rules about that. <clears throat> We're kind of free here in Texas. And in a pinch, I mean, I could, I could, if it was a small uh, RV, I could actually pull it into the backyard, put it where I have the, uh, where I have the trailer. So yeah, that isn't, that isn't the factor. The gas mileage would be a factor. Uh, problems parking it would be a factor. I haven't, I've never really seriously thought about taking a bus, but I thought it'd be fun to like, get you know, go on and do a railroad uh, trip. You know, take a railroad line somewhere. It's been a long time since I've seen the long, long trailer. Yeah, there you go. You can, you can come along and drive and cook and then we'll just uh, be on the road constantly. Rhonda calls cooking, okay. Like I said, I've thought about a, a RV, but I think I think this this uh, live stream may have uh, soured me on that idea a little bit. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that though, Rhonda. <coughs> Magical mystery trip. There you go. Well, that just means you get several meals out of it, Rhonda. I 
mean, you've seen me do some of my cooking vlogs. You know, I always uh, make, you know, double the recipe just because, you know, I know this is going to be good. And I'm still working on that lasagna soup from a couple of weeks ago, but we'll probably polish that off this weekend. I don't know, I haven't thought about dinner that much yet. <clears throat> we'll see. Kind of think I want to go out and uh, look at a, look at some more like antique places, see if I can find a couple more pieces of uranium glass. It's not going to be as serious of a collection as like the rocks, but I want to kind of have a complete set of stuff. And so I'm looking for like some small plates or, you know, saucers and that kind of stuff. You start a diet tomorrow, so you're having nachos and red wine tonight. Sounds good. Oh yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, restaurants I've been to have been very, very good. In fact, I think there have only been a couple of them that I really didn't like. And uh, you know, I've been back, uh, back to a couple of them a few times. I don't eat out a whole lot. That's that's the thing. Okay, Scott arrived at the Rock and Mineral Shop or show us, so it'll, we'll see what's going on next time. That was where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house is, right? Yeah, that was, that was a really good barbecue. I mean, that was, that was a place that, you know, we went, we went there, uh, when we, when I drove to Texas the first time and we checked that place out and it was really good. And then another time that Jordan came and visited, we actually made a trip back there and, and visited again. So. Yeah, I suppose if you have a lot of food allergies, uh, eating out can be a challenge. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, I, I, I don't necessarily see myself on a motorcycle, but I don't know. Oh, I've heard stories about that, Michelle, where you find a water, uh, a dead body in like a water tower or something like that. And people first start noticing that the water tastes funny. It's like, ew. <clears throat> I don't ever drink anything out of the tap, though. So even the stuff I have here is bottled. I mean, I guess it's bad enough coming out of a reservoir, but can you imagine coming out of a water tower? And then, and the first reason people notice it is because it, they, the water tastes funny.
Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine you probably don't drink the tap water there. But I never, I you know, I haven't been a tap water drinker for years and years and years. I just, I buy a bottle of water at the grocery store. I don't buy the individual ones. So I buy like the two gallon, two and a half gallon things and, and pour it into a glass. Everything will kill you, so pick something fun. Yeah, that's kind of gross. <coughs> I definitely wouldn't drink that water either, Rhonda. You glow as it is. Imagine you drink the water. <clears throat> yeah. I know they were like uh, excavating your yard recently. How far did they have to go down? Oh, eight and a half feet. Okay. I was saying 81 feet. It's like, whoa. Eight and a half feet. That's a lot. That's how far they had to go down to get past all the radiation, right? That's a trip. One foot each time it was tested positive. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Rhonda's, uh, Rhonda's rocks might already glow in the dark. <clears throat> Yeah, now you have to. Rip. That doesn't. That doesn't surprise me because you you dig out the dirt around the driveway, and then put loose dirt in there. Then the compacted dirt is going to spread out. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, <clears throat> doesn't surprise me entirely that that the driveway is settling. I, I expect that at some point it, uh, I won't have to put more soil in there, but it's still compacting down a little bit. You know, you gotta remember that soil, you know, over time kind of sinks. And so eventually I'm getting to the point now where I don't think I'm gonna have to put my, uh, put uh, any much more soil in there, you know, but because it'll stop sinking at some point. You know, real uranium glass, yikes. Yeah, I love having the clocks. Uh, you know, I got, I got them, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to dial them in. The grandfather clock is almost perfect. It's within like a minute a week. And so that's really close. Uh, the antique 130-year-old uh, clock, uh, that's getting close. Um, it was only off like a minute or so. Uh, 
I did something to the cuckoo clock though, and it lost about 15 minutes in the past week. So I'm kind of back to ground zero on that one, but I like having them. It's uh, about 12.30 in the afternoon here. Um, I get uh, raised soil, uh, raised uh, uh, garden bed soil at Home Depot. That, that's what I use. It's supposedly organic, local may, uh, locally made. Yeah, I've intentionally gotten these clocks all in places where the cats can't get at them. The 130-year-old one is on the mantle over the fireplace. Fortunately, the cats haven't taken much interest in the clocks. In fact, when the clocks were first here, they were a little freaked out by them when they chime. Yeah, Moses did a really good job. I'm very, very impressed with uh, with the work he did. It's funny, he's just got this little portable building that he bought. It almost looks like one of those like uh, sheds that you get at Home Depot, but it's one of the larger ones. And it's probably, you know, uh, you know, 400 square feet. It's just, you know, 20 by 40 or something like that, 20 by 30 building. And, <clears throat> He just set it on his property and just set up a clock shop in it. The guy is really young, so it really surprised me that that you know he's as good as he is, but he is knowledgeable. <clears throat> Yeah, I hear you. You get something. You get something from a kid. You're right. That's that is. Uh, doesn't even matter if it's broken. You keep it anyway. They've learned to climb doors. Oh, that's great. <laughs> You have crazy critters, Rhonda. Well, I'm glad you were able to stop in today, Roberta. Uh, and thank you as always for watching the videos. Can't even close the door because the cat sleeps on the door, huh? <clears throat> I'm glad my cats aren't crazy like that.
There was a uh, one time when I was getting ready to move out of the house in California that the house was mostly empty because most of the stuff had been put in the pods and <clears throat> White and Nibble were kind of freaked out by that because, you know, the entire time they'd lived in that house, uh, you know, there was always the same amount of stuff in there. All of a sudden there was nothing in the house, including many of the things that were kind of their security blankets, you know, their bedroom uh, in California had shelves on it like their room here does. And uh, when I started getting ready to move, you know, I took all that down and they didn't like that. And there was one point where I had had the front door open for a pretty long period of time. I think it was a day that we had like, a, you know, visit, you know, uh, like a open house kind of thing going on. And I couldn't find Bite uh, afterwards. Uh, I looked all over the house. I couldn't find him. It turns out he crawled up onto the counter, jumped up onto the refrigerator and got into the cabinet over the refrigerator and was hiding in there. And I actually went, finally got to the point where I said, okay, well, I know he's got a tendency to sometimes go into the cabinets. So I just said, I'm gonna go through all the cabinets, open the door, he came charging out of there at a hundred miles an hour. That's quite an accomplishment, Rhonda. really quiet in here right now. Yeah, you know I planted my uh, tomatoes and strawberries last weekend. I lost two of the strawberry plants. I may replace those today. But there were a couple of them that looked kind of sickly when I when I got them. So I was I wasn't surprised. I was actually expecting I might lose four of them, but two of them I think are going to pull back. The others are doing great. All the tomatoes are doing great. Hey Nancy. The, yeah, the blueberry, the blackberry, and the raspberry plants are all still alive in the in the bucket. So we'll let them go for a while. 
and we'll see what comes to them. But I, uh, right now they're all alive, so that's a good thing. Well, I created things that I like. I'm very interested and very curious to see how the tomato thing is gonna go. Because that's, it's a, uh, it, they're very densely packed in there. You know, in the past I've had eight tomato plants in that section. I have 21 in there now. Kitties are doing fine. <clears throat> And there's the grandfather clock. That means it's 12.44 here. <clears throat> that actually means it's 12.45, but the clock I'm looking at says 12.44. Uh, Gene's checking out. Baby goats, that sounds like fun. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people have problems with like rabbits. I've never seen rabbits in the area, so I think I'll be all right. <clears throat> Plus the fact the, the tomatoes are hopefully, hopefully gonna be completely off the ground. Well, my understanding is the lunar eclipse actually happens tonight. Tonight, tomorrow morning, actually. It's supposed to hit totality in, in uh, Texas about, uh, about 2 a.m., I think. I don't know. I've, I've had a, uh, a mammalian pet all my life of some, for, of some form or another. And so, you know, it, it would be a big change not having some sort of a critter uh, in my life. So I don't know. I might not do two. We might go back to one. Because I only had two because bite and nibble came as a pair. <clears throat> I don't know if uh, I don't know if the weather is going to cooperate. It's cloudy and overcast right now. It's. I was thinking though, we're two weeks away from the solar eclipse, and I thought, oh, that's odd. We're going to have a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse two weeks apart. And I started thinking, no, that actually makes a lot of sense. No, I, I'm not a small dog person. If I'm going to get a dog, I'm going to get a big dog, and I probably won't do that. Uh, until uh, until uh, I retire, because me being gone twelve hours a day—that's not fair to a dog. Yeah, we're. We're in the 50s right now, but it's completely overcast. It's supposed to rain tonight. What's the difference I mean, between solar and lunar eclipses? Uh, solar eclipse is when the moon passes between the sun and the earth and casts a shadow on the earth, so it blocks out the sun during the day. A lunar eclipse is when uh, the earth passes between the sun and the moon and blocks out the moon. So the moon is gonna go dark uh, tonight. And basically, uh, anywhere in uh, North America, you'll be able to see it if you're up a, up late at night. You know, if you're in Hawaii, it's going to happen in early evening. If you're on the East Coast, it'll probably happen at like three or four in the morning. I think it it, it starts about midnight here and uh, peaks out about two a.m. I don't know. I don't know if I'll uh, go out and see it tonight or not. Like I said, it's all. Uh, 
it's all um, overcast here. So I don't know if there'd be anything to see, especially if it's raining and it's supposed to rain tonight. So. I am definitely gonna try and live stream if possible. Uh, I'm concerned about the weather and I'm kind of still keeping an eye on that because right now, well, tomorrow is two weeks exactly to the, to the eclipse. And so I've been kind of watching the weather and right now, you know, the uh, two week forecast shows overcast uh, on next uh, two Sundays from now. And so I am a little concerned about that and uh, I'm gonna do my best with what I can do, but if it's overcast, I don't know. I don't know why it thinks I'm in Minneapolis. Yeah, see every day now until next Sunday, which is the seventh, the eclipse is on the eighth, but there are two days, this coming Tuesday, this coming Thursday, in the next two weeks, where it isn't predicted to be uh, cloudy. And so, I don't know, we'll have to see. Now they are kind of saying partly cloudy. So, I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky. I'll start making a, uh, you know, a closer estimate of what's gonna happen when we get a few days out. But, you know, 15 days from now. Hey, Tracy. I don't usually go out to get a specific kind of pet. Usually I'll go to the pound. Uh, that's, you know, I've always... Uh, We've always sort of done that. The only, I think the only pet that we've ever had was the first dog I had. And that was, it, it happened because uh, some family friends, their dog had puppies and we ended up with one of them. But the second and third dog we got from the pound. Uh, every cat that I've ever had came from the pound, except for the first one. Uh, he was, uh, she actually was a cat that belonged to my friend, Matt, who does these Island Hawaii Horizon videos. Um, when he moved to Hawaii the first time, they couldn't take the cat with him. So I ended up adopting the cat and the cat spent the rest of his life with me. And then when that one died, I ended up going and getting the cat I had before Fight Nibble. And he was what, 16 weeks old when I found him at the pound and he was with me his whole life. And, and, I, and then Bite and Nibble came along. So yeah, uh, I don't go look for a specific breed of cat. Um, you know, I'll go to a pound and get something. Um, yeah, I've, I've actually got an app on my phone that'll tell me where the uh, space station is. There it is. Sorry, I had to look for it here. <clears throat> it wasn't cold what I thought it was. Oh, well, whatever, I can't get it to work right now. It's the first time I've used it with a new phone. You know, it wants to go through setup mode and so. Yeah, they sort of adopted me. Well, I don't know. I, I guess I adopted them because they didn't really want me at first. You know, I've told the story before. I gave Byte his name because my first, uh, tried to grab him, he bit me.
but you know they were both feral and I don't think they have, if they, if they had any experience of people it wasn't positive Flash is doing good she's uh you know kind of in in hibernation mode right now cuz it's a little too cold out for her but she'll be out Yeah, Maine Coon would be nice. But like I said, I'm going to find, you know, if, if I go with another cat, and I probably will, um, I'll go to the pound and it'll depend on what I find. Yeah, Bite and Nibble were that way too. The, somebody, I think, just abandoned them in my backyard. Yeah, well, I brought her in. The, I brought Flash in the house a few times, and that does usually, uh, you know, get her out and about. I've had her like wandering around on the floor out here during a live stream. One of the dogs that we adopted was uh, actually actually adopted us sort of because he was a stray. Ended up in our uh, front yard. He was he was terribly afraid of uh, lightning and thunder, and apparently gotten out of his house uh, during a thunderstorm, and ended up in our yard. We called the pound, and they came and they came and got him, and uh, nobody claimed him. So. After a three day waiting period, we adopted him. I checked her whereabouts last night. Uh, she's been kind of sleeping in the, uh, the same place for the last week or so. so she sleeps in what I, uh, what, I, what I used to call her summer house. Uh, the place I had in California, she had basically two two houses that she could sleep in. Uh, her winter house, which was a box that was under the patio cover, and her summery house, which was uh, at the bottom end of the yard. And basically, she hibernated during the winter in the winter house. and She could sleep anywhere she wanted in the summer. And sometimes it was in the summer house, sometimes it was just somewhere in the yard. Yeah, collies are beautiful dogs. The first dog I had was a collie shepherd mix. Do I have any pictures of her? I would bet you I probably do here. Yeah, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't have any pictures of her. But she was a college shepherd mix. Beautiful dog. You know, the truth is I thought about doing that, putting some sort of like a air tag on Flash or something, but I kind of think I know where all the writing places are now. There was one place that she was hiding on a regular basis that I could never find her for, you know, and there's most nights uh, up until like six months ago when I discovered her hiding place, um, you know, most nights I didn't know where she was.
Yeah, it's okay. We, I, I, I see enough uh, cases of people typing messages where they're all thumbs that I, I usually just, uh, you know, I can usually figure out what they're trying to say. All right, it's one o'clock. Yeah, she's definitely spoiled. There's the grandfather clock. I don't know if I'm going to vlog today. Like I said, I think I want to go try and find some uh, more uranium glass. That's not going to be a huge collection, but I kind of want to have a, a complete set. So I want to, now that I get some like glasses, some drinking glasses, some, some like cocktail glass kind of things, I want to find uh, like some plates and saucers and that kind of stuff, and then I'll be done. This isn't going to be like rocks where, you know, I have $10,000 worth of rocks. All right, BBC and me is checking out. French toast. Yeah, I know you've mentioned that a few times. That would be a good one. I showed this a little earlier. This is something I picked up recently uh, that I wanted to. It looks really good with a uranium glass. Basically, it's a one foot long, you know, strip of LEDs that go really deep into the ultraviolet. And so that looks kind of cool. Uh, the uranium glass does really well with it. Unfortunately, the uh, the minerals themselves, not so much. You can actually see I got the uh, uranium glass being lit up by one of those strips over there right now. And it looks really cool. So I may use that in the display case that I'm hoping to build at some point. And uh, I got four of these, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I really got, got lucky with the job on that. I really like it. They appreciate me. So I'm making decent money. And I get three or four days off every week. It's It's nice. Yeah, well, these aren't just the, the 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 strips. Like I said, these are in are deep into the ultraviolet range. I do feel settled here. Yeah, this is this is you know I've never been happier in my life than where I am now. I'm in better shape financially than I've ever been. Um, you know, just life is really good right now. Yeah, exactly. And I got enough uh, enough uh, extra income that I can pursue some of my hobbies like this bad boy here. You know, I showed this a little earlier. This is my, my newest and largest acquisition. Just a big, impressive piece of quartz. So very happy to have added that to my collection. Kara over at the rock shop said she was reluctant to sell it, but she would sell it to me because she knew I would love it. And she was right. She gave me a really good deal on it too. So I'd been thinking about that for a couple of weeks. I showed that to you, showed you a picture of that last week. Yeah, exactly. It does look like the Fortress of Solitude, doesn't it? Well, that rock and mineral shop I go to all the time. Um, there's also the Cameron Trading Company um, that I've been checking out. They have all sorts of fun stuff, including uh, uranium glass. Um, I got some uranium glass there. 
And I really like that. So. Yeah, th there is some peace on that too, knowing my mom, you know, isn't, isn't in pain anymore. And you know, that, that that's behind me now. Yeah, that's, that's sort of what I'm doing is kind of looking at the antique markets. There have been pl three places now that I've gone where I've found, found stuff. I found it at that, uh, at that antique mall out in McGregor that I went that first time where I got those really cool candlesticks and the Cameron Trading Company. And then those cocktail glasses that I showed you uh, a few weeks ago, I picked those up at a place at a little antique store called the Junkie Monkey. And that may be actually where I go back today because uh, they had actually, uh, you know, several kind of interesting pieces and I want to kind of see what they got. So, yeah, I miss my mom. It's that, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon is where the time where she'd call me on the phone. We talk and I do miss that not being, you know, part of my uh, part of my routine anymore. Yeah, Jordan and I really, really did better for ourselves when we finally left California because everything really turned around for me when that happened. I think, it, you know, Jordan was doing well in California, too, but, you know, I think he's a lot better off where he is. Thanks, Charlotte. And, uh, and uh, And I know she misses you too. Well, it'd be funny if uh, if Russia was the one that finally decided to take out ISIS, because I guess they're saying it was ISIS that did that. And I don't think Russia is going to take, take that sitting down. No, oh, yeah, I, I know it's Logan, Logan. I'm sorry. I just, my brain froze there for a second. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It happens when you get old, Logan. You'll find out about that in about 60 years. You know, I think my mom finally kind of found peace when she accepted the fact that the end was near. Because at the beginning of my visit, when I saw her the last time, you know, she was, she was, she kept saying, I'm not here to die, I'm here to live. And it's like, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, you're here to die. And and unfortunately, my sister had to kind of break the news. You know, mom, you're you have a terminal disease. You're not going to make it through this. And I think after she accepted that. Um, she uh, it was a little bit more peaceful, so. Yeah, I'm interested to see what I'm going to do. I just got to, I got to wait inspiration right now. That's, that's the thing that's really holding me up right now. I need the inspiration to start working because that's a big project. You know, it's going to be, you know, four feet tall, eight feet wide, three feet deep. 
the lumber. I was pricing the lumber. Just the lumber itself is going to be nearly five hundred dollars, I think. Yeah, I know. Some sometimes though, you gotta get to the point where you just accept the inevitable because. You know, there's there's times where you can't, uh, you know, you can't you can't control what's going to happen. Well, there, there's also some little details of it. I'm not really sure yet how I'm gonna how it's gonna work, and so I think that's also one of the things that's kind of making me uh, delay things a little bit. But we'll get it at some point. Well, and and that was part of it too, uh, Gene. Uh, is at the end, you know, when my mom finally did accept her condition, you know, the most important thing to her is, you know, you're happy, right? You're happy where you are. And she kept asking that over and over again. Yeah, yeah, mom, I'm in, I love where I am. I love my job. I love my house. I love the new place I am. And so I think that made it easier for her to let go. Because it, it was less than a week after that she was gone. And I guess it just went peaceful. I'm, I'm glad my sister didn't have to be there for that one like she was. She was there when my dad went. Um, she just got the word, uh, you know, they called her one night and said she's gone. Anyway, I've uh, blown way past my two hour limit here and I want to go do a little shopping. So I'm going to pull the plug on this one. Thanks everyone. This one started a little slow, but we picked it up and it was a good live stream. Uh, I enjoyed myself and I hope you enjoyed this too. And we'll see you next week. Good night, everyone.